Hey guys, so I'm going to be talking about level extents and then we'll talk a little bit about scope boxes and controlling those level extents. Um, I've got three buildings. This is in Revit 2020. You can see kind of what's going on here. Um, we'll go into a 3D view and kind of take a look at them from there. So here's a level and you have a couple options here. You can drag that 3D extents, which will affect your um, section views. If that, if you do not have the 2D extents and 3D extents unassociated from one another. And by, by what I mean by that is if you click that 3D button, you can drag this 2D extents and you can kind of see what's going on. You can move that, the 3D extent stays out here. So let's jump back into a 3D view and then we'll just drag, we'll drag both these out and kind of see what happens in that. Uh, section view. So you can see that the 2D extent stays where it's at, the 3D extent gets pulled out here. Um, and you can see that the 2D extent here gets pulled out with the 3D extent. It's because they're still associated with each other. They're essentially locked. Um, and because of that, they will get pulled out, um, both of them will. But if you unlock it by clicking that 3D extent, pulling that in, you can kind of place it anywhere you want. And I'll kind of show you why you may want to do that. Um, also, when you're changing stuff in 3D view, if if you've messed with views before, usually this right here will be locked to another 3D extents. And then when you drag it, So locked here, when you drag it, it'll actually move it around. If we go back into a 3D view, it will, it doesn't keep that association with it. So if we go then back to that section view, we can see what's going on. So we actually have to drag this back and re-lock that to the other one. So one way to, to deal with that, especially if you have multiple buildings or just kind of uh, a weird building with different elevations. Um, you may, or just different levels where different, you know, portions of the building are at. You may want to disassociate that 3D extents and then now you can shift this around with no effect on, or no effect from the 3D extents. If we go back to that 3D view and like pull this way out, we can go back into the section and see that those, those, um, levels are still exactly where they are and you can see this little dot which represents the 3D extents is uh, way out here. Um, so there's a few ways to kind of get around that. It just allows a little bit more flexibility. It depends on you know what you're doing, how you want to convey that information, but it's there. So um, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, so if we jump back into the 3D view and select on one of these levels, we can right click and we can um, maximize the 3D extents, and you can see what's going on here. Uh, this is something we probably won't, you know, wouldn't want to have just because it doesn't convey the correct information. And um, real quick, since I haven't showed you guys, this is level three, building one, um, or this level is, and each of these buildings. So this is B1, this is B2, this is B3. So you can see where this kind of is confusing because it's all the way over into building three. So this is something we probably wouldn't want to have. Um, I'll go ahead and pull this over. And what we could do is pull it over here and kind of get it aligned. But instead of doing that, I'll wait until we actually create a scope box and then we'll use that to drive where those extents are. And in the meantime, we'll jump over to this this 3D view, I mean this building three, and we'll take a look at kind of um, working with those extents and but still, you know, keeping our levels um, in this way, um, you know, for consistency purposes, it's really up to you on how you want to convey that information, but we may not want to have this extents like right here, maybe it doesn't show it very well, so we pull it out here, align it with this one, and it looks 
consistent to what um, you generally see. Um, so currently the 3D extents is right here. So we'll bring it back out here. We'll lock those out there. So now if we do start messing with that 3D extents, it's actually going to affect these. So what we'll do is jump out here and kind of take a look at what's going on. So we have these 3D extents, and maybe we what we want to do is pull this in and can kind of confine it to this building or this uh, level 2 portion of the building. And then do the same for this one. So you can see that looks a little bit better and we can kind of see what's going on here. And when you have a lot of buildings on one site and you have multiple levels and different elevations and stuff, this is something you, you might want to do. Now what we'll do is just jump back into that section view and kind of see what's going on. So you can see that the extents of that, or the 2D extents is kind of pull down to the buildings, just like what we did with the 3D extents, because the 3D is still locked to the 2D extents. Um, and that's um, because of that association, it's controlling that 2D extents. Now, again, what we can do is click on it. We can click on this 3D and then pull this out. And then we can do the same down here and say we want to pull this out a little bit further. Click on level two, turn on the 2D extents. We'll keep that where it's at. And maybe we want to pull in that 3D extents. So we'll turn the 2D back on and then pull it outwards. Uh, and then we'll do the same for this side. Lock it to the other 2D extents. Maybe we want to pull this in a little bit further. And now you can see that. So anytime from now on, if we start updating that extent, say if we add a little, you know, a portion over here, it will um, not affect the 2D extents. Now that's up to you. If you want to keep that association, then um, when you do update that 3D extents in the 3D view, then it will um, update in here as well, as long as it's locked or the 2D and 3D extents are locked to one another. Now, scope box effects on on this will well it, what it'll do is um, when we create a scope box, it'll combine the 3D extents to the uh, scope box itself, and then outside of the scope box, you'll see the 2D extents. So it extends, so it goes through the scope box and extends outside the scope box. Um, and what we'll do is draw some scope boxes. So in you know, again, this is something you might you may want to do if you have multiple buildings on a site. So we'll go up here in the view tab, uh, the scope box under the crate panel. We'll draw that first scope box. We'll change the name, so we'll just give it uh, B1. Oops, B1 for that one. And click scope box again. And over here, you actually have a option to name it, so we'll do B2. And then also the height, so the extent. Now, 40 for this one's fine, but if you have a... Uh, um, you know, a, a building that's 100 feet or, or more, then you might, you, you may want to update the height. Um, in this, at least, you know, in this, um, in this option here or this setting, but you can do that after the fact in a 3D view, and I'll show you that. So we'll draw this one, and it's, it has the correct name. So now we'll jump back to that 3D view. In this 3D view, you can see the scope boxes. You can select on them. Now, you don't get that parameter that you can update uh, that you saw the 40 feet in. Um, but what you can do is drag these. So um, I like to drag these down a little bit further. Uh, 
past that level one or at least whatever level they're closest to. I'd like to bring it further down below it. If if that is a level I want to um a level that I want kind of assigned to that scope box. And I'll show you what happens if you don't have it. So we'll pull that actually above it and then we'll try to assign it and then take a look at that error. So um what we'll do is actually just grab all three of these and then we can go into that scope box parameter that's um that the levels have and then switch it to B2. And you can see it gets confined. And here's the 2D extents. And you can actually shift these around. They won't have any effect on the sections or any other views that you have, but they will affect this 3D view. And you can pull them out and they're, um, they're actually locked. So you can shift them around. And you may wanna do that if you have like buildings right up next to each other or you want to just kind of shift them around to get a better view of them or whatever the case is, you have that option. And that's essentially just extending that 2D extents. And you can see that 3D extents is actually in there and you do not get that option to actually pull them around anymore. It's because they're locked to that scope box. Now you can come over here and turn that off, but um, you know, you may want to do that if you just wanted to kind of get it to that building and then from there um, extend it out. That's up to you. Generally, after I set that scope box, I leave them locked to it. Uh, that The extents doesn't get messed with after that, so it's kind of nice. Now we'll do the same for these two levels. Switch them to B1. And then down here, we'll do the same thing, and then we'll take a look at that um, error that we get. So this is essentially saying that this level, the extents of it doesn't pass through that scope box. So we can um, we can say disassociate, but that um, doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't do anything for you. So just pull the scope box down, and then as long as it's kind of passing, or that level's passing through that scope box, you can then go back and then it confines that uh, 3D extents to that scope box. So you can see this is a little bit more organized. The levels are confined to the buildings. It is something, you know, a little bit more manageable than having the extents pass through uh, every building. So in that section B, we can kind of see what's going on. So here's the... Um, 2D extents, and we can shift these around, and they don't have an effect on the 3D extents, so if you do move these around, they're not going to update in the uh, sections that you have, but um, you can shift them around to, to whatever whatever you like. Uh, this scope box does um, control that, so it will move them around. You can see kind of what's going on. If you do bring them in, you can see it keeps that um, distance with the scope box. It's all dependent on where you're placing it. So if we grab these again, we can pull those back out. Now, these are flexible, but the 3D extents is not. As I mentioned before, it's locked. So you can try to select on it, but it's not going to work for you because that 3D ex extents is locked to the scope box. Um, so hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of how to use uh, levels in this way. This is something you may want to do if you have just a weird building with multiple levels where, um, you know, different portions of the buildings at those levels are, are, are kind of different. Um, you may want to do this to control that extents. Um, you also may want to do this if, um, you know, you have multiple buildings on a site. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Hopefully you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.